In the weeks immediately after the Boston Tea Party, the colonists of New England braced themselves for the reaction of the government in London. Rather than wait passively for the backlash, they began to make plans for the next stage of their campaign. Many of them were of Ulster Scots descent. In the diary of one of their Presbyterian ministers of the time, David McClure of Boston, he frequently said they were Scotch-Irish. The inhabitants of Coleraine, a small Scotch-Irish settlement in western Massachusetts, were among the first to declare their hand. Coleraine's Committee of Correspondence met at John Woods's Tavern on the 31st of January, 1774 to adopt a series of resolutions pledging further resistance. These became known as the Coal Rain Resolves. Some of them were descendants of veterans of the dreadful 105 day long siege of Londonderry in Ireland in 1689. I, Joseph Caldwell, being the moderator of this committee and the moderator of the town of Coal Rain, I would like to thank again our good friend and brother, John Woods, for granting us the use of this fine tavern for our business. It is my great honor to provide this humble tavern for our most important business here today. Now, we all eight of us know why we are here, and that is to put our names to a series of six vehement resolves from this town. From just apprehension of the horrors and terror of slavery, we are induced to make the following resolves. First, resolve that as free men and British men, we have the right to the disposal of our own. Our certain there is no property in that which another can have right to take from us without our consent. And that the measures of late pursued by the Ministry of Great Britain in their attempts to subject the colonies to taxation by the authority of the British Parliament is unjust, arbitrary, inconsistent, and unconstitutional. As you know, my friends, it has to be I, James Stewart, representing this town for six years in the committee at Boston. Tell us then what happened to that tea in Boston Harbor. No one rightly knows. David Lyons might. <laughs> that is enough, Daniel Donaldson. Word has reached us in retribution for the tea that was thrown into the harbor as a tax protest that the London government plans to close our port here in Boston to starve us. Well, my grandfather, who I am named after, told me all about the siege of Derry that he endured back in 1689 for 105 years days. Secondly, resolve that by landing teas in America, imposing a duty by an act of parliament, as is said, made for the support of government, etc., as a direct tendency to subvert our constitution and to render our general assembly useless and government arbitrary, as well as bondage and slavery, which never was designed by heaven or earth. Boston may be 100 miles away, but whatever happens to our brethren there, they will require our unwavering support. Their cause is our cause. Our Presbyterian minister, the Reverend Daniel McClellan, has approved of the actions we are about to take today. A fine man, educated in Ireland, where our people come from, and who gave our town its Ulster name. And like you, James, my ancestors survived the siege of Derry. My father, Hugh Morrison, was born in Scotland and fled to Ulster as a boy with his family to escape the persecution of King James II, only to find in London Derry that he experienced even more oppression from the king. They emigrated to Massachusetts for freedom. If this king, King George III, beseeches us Scots-Irish once again, in Boston this time, instead of Derry, oh, then I am ready. 
Are you ready, Thomas Bell? Well said, John Morrison. Well said. And I am, as a, a true Ulsterman, born in Ballymoney in County Antrim. <laughs> I too inherited stories, stories of courage from the siege of Derry, where preservation of liberties drew them to so low as to eat horse flesh, mice, dogs. But like them, we will be raised again. I too am ready to resolve my defiance to a tyrant monarch. Liberty. Liberty before loyalty. Here, here. Here, here. Thirdly, resolve that raising a revenue in America to support placemen and pensioners who, no doubt, where their scheme is once established, will be as merciless as those taskmasters in Egypt and will silence the murmurs of the people by laying on them greater burdens. And do not forget that it was King William that granted this colony our 1691 Charter of Massachusetts Bay, which is the sacred guarantee of our liberties. And despite your thinly guised evasions, we all know it was John Adams who often spoke of William, Mary, and of the glorious revolution. Amongst others who planned the Tea Party at Boston, aided by the esteemed son of Ulster, Dr. Thomas Young. Fourthly, resolve that we do discountenance mobs and unlawful and riotous assemblies, but when our valuable liberties and privileges are trodden underfoot, and all petitions and remonstrances are rejected and treated with infamy and scorn, it is the duty of every true-hearted American, if possible, to free themselves from impending ruin. I may be American-born, and... Speak up! There's a kind of smith. And no, not by ancestry, uh, be it Ulster Scots, Scots-Irish. Uh, uh, but what I do know is that the heroic cry of Derry resonates within me. No surrender. Uh, we do not seek independence from Britain. Rather, liberty for the 13 British colonies here in America. We call upon the king to stop these unconstitutional actions of the London government and to restore to us our full British liberties. Liberty and union. Fifthly, resolved that the late proceedings of the town of Boston, assembled in Boston, to consult measures against the East India Company, have gained the approbation and applause of every true hearted honest man, and as their struggle is for the rights purchased by our renowned ancestors, which we esteem as dear as life itself, do fully express our satisfaction. Liberty and <laughs> I need no history lesson from you lot. Born in a Scotch-Irish settlement in New Hampshire, named in memorial to that dear city on the siege across the ocean, and on the day the Dead Seas began on April 1689, so the Boston Revolt did on Boston Common. We can thank Providence for the overthrow of that tyrant King James II, and for our ancestors' deliverance by King William, Prince of Orange, for his declaration, for his revolution, for his Bill of Rights. And who can say that his words may inspire another declaration, another revolution, here in America? Well, let us hope that our actions here today will precipitate that happy conclusion. Sickly, resolved that we will not, by ourselves or any others, directly or indirectly purchase any tea. Never will we use any on any occasion. Tell that unrighteous act be repeated. I will use our utmost endeavors with every person in our town. As we have opportunity, that they shall do the same. And those who buy and sell tea 
contrary to our true intent and meaning, shall be viewed as enemies to their country and treated as such. Upon a serious consideration and a due sense of our just rights, liberties, and properties, look upon ourselves by the laws of natural reason and common sense to cast in our might when our eyes behold the daring insults of extravagant men. Not only those on the other side of the water, but men born and brought up as brethren with us, whose famous abilities gave us just expectations that they would die with us rather than deny us. But alas, our hopes are gone. Designing men had rather sacrificed their whole country that was bought by their and our glorious ancestry at the price of their blood than gave up so small a profit. Since they could not obtain their former desires as they should get by a little detestable tea <laughs> sent out by the East India Company upon conditions unknown. We are sorry to see any of Adam's posterity so blinded. If the light in man be darkness, how great is that darkness? Now, in the present posture of our political affairs, it plainly appears to us that it is the design of this present ministry to serve us as they have served our brethren in Ireland. First, to raise a revenue from us, sufficient to support a standing army, as well as placemen and pensioners. And then laugh at our calamities and glut themselves on our spoil. Many of us in this town being eyewitnesses of those cruel and remorseless enemies In the months that followed, communities right across the 13 colonies, many of them Scotch-Irish, and inspired by the same ancestral memories, followed Coleraine's example and published their own many declarations of independence, setting the scene for the world-changing events of the 4th of July, 1776.